Welcome back to the channel and this is going to be part one of a free part tutorial that I'm doing on my YouTube channel on making the little soot sprite from Spirited Away. So this is the final result here. It's just so adorable to make this in 3D. So this is the final render that you'll be achieving in this tutorial and I'll quickly show you the little character here. So um, one of the things as well, not only are we going to be making this guy, but we're going to be creating this simple very easy to use little rig that is just so fun. It's just going to allow us to pose um, the character so effectively and it's just so simple to make as well. So yeah, this is going to be it. I will also be uploading the Patreon file or the, the blend file to my Patreon. So if you want to check that out in the description, um, you can do that. It's also a great way to support the channel if you sign up and it gives you access to hundreds of other files and projects that I work on. And especially if you stick around, there's a lot of things that I'm going to be adding in the next few months. So um, yeah, without wasting any more time, let's jump in and make this adorable uh, little project together in Blender. I'll be using Blender 4.2. We have a new scene open up in Blender. Go ahead and select all the default objects and press delete. We're then going to go shift A. We're going to go to our mesh options and add in a UV sphere. And then we're going to go to our front orthographic view. Now with the sphere active, we're going to go over into our edit mode. And let's go enable proportional editing. We're just going to select some of these bottom verts, like so. And then just go G and Z and move it up a little bit. And you can roll your middle mouse button to control the fall off. Now we just want to make this quite so it's not quite 100% spherical, we just want it with a little bit of a flatness at the bottom like this. Not too much. We're going to tab back out, then we're going to go to our modifiers, click on add modifier and then in the search bar type in sub and give this a subdivision surface and then right click and go shade smooth. Okay. Now so the hairs don't get messed up later, we're going to make it both two in the viewport and in the render. Okay, That'll make sense later. Well, for now, let's go Shift A. Let's go to our mesh options, add in another UV sphere. We're going to go G and move this one over. And let's once again under our modifiers go Add, Search, and this time we're going to type in Mirror. Click on Mirror, and inside Mirrors where we want, we're going to click on Eyedropper and then select the first sphere we added in as a reference. And then with this selected, we're going to go R X nine zero and hit Enter. Then go S to scale it down about this much and then go G to move it in. Now I'm looking at some references over to the side. Let's say the eyes are about this big compared to the body. We're also in the right orthographic view. We're also going to go G, Y and move them forward. Okay. So in the right orthographic view we see it like this and in the front orthographic view we see something like this. Now the eyes, um, what we can do to make them sit properly is we're going to select the body and we can simply go into edit mode of the body and up here enable X symmetry. We still have proportional editing enabled, so we're just going to select the middle vertex between the eyes. And then in our top orthographic view, we're just going to go G and move it back a little bit just to flatten it. And let's grab a vertex over on this side and move it out. Now this will work because we have X mirror enabled. We're going to go ahead and turn it off, tab back out, and now we see it sits a little bit better. But what I'm going to do as well, I'm just going to move these eyes back a little bit. I'm going to go S, Y and flatten them slightly. And I'm going to go R just to rotate slightly and G to move them in. It can be a little bit finicky, might scale just a bit, but you'll get it eventually. So something like that. Let's right click and go shade smooth. And now we're just going to add some placeholder materials to the eyes. So we're going to go to our materials tab. We're going to go new. Let's just call this eye and just leave it at that, just I. And we'll leave the um, viewport display color as white. But what we're gonna do, we're gonna go plus and go new, and let's just call this material pupil. And under the viewport display, let's just make it black so we can see it. And then we're gonna tab into edit mode and just select the vertex in the middle and go control plus to grow to selection. And then let's go ahead and assign that pupil material. I'm going to turn off proportional editing and with the still active, I'm just going to go I just to insert it slightly. And I might just select these faces here and just assign the eye. Run the pupil here to look quite small. Awesome. And in this case, I might just go to my top view, rotate the eye just a little bit more, move it in, just to kind of have that pupil kind of more matching the reference. If you have to, grab the body as well. And with X mirror enabled, you can just come in here and just kind of move some of these verts a little bit just to kind of get the spacing around your eyes. 
Okay, but something like that is looking really, really cute. I'm really happy with that. We're also going to select a body and we're going to go to a materials tab and go new. This is called a um, soot body. And we're going to come to the viewport display and make it darker like this. Awesome. Let's also go to our um, render engine for now and just change it to cycles while we're at it. I always recommend you work with a GPU if you have one. And also under the max render samples, we're just going to make that 45 under here in the render. I know it's a little bit early to get into the render settings, but it's just because we'll, um, we're not far away from working with our hair. So we're just doing that at the moment. Okay, so I'm going to press A to select everything. I'm going to go G and Z and move it up. And we're also going to add the little arms and legs here. And they're very simple. So we're going to go Shift A. We're going to go to Mesh Options and add in a cylinder. We're going to go to the Add Cylinder option here. And let's just change this to 12 vertices. And let's just um, also come here to the radius and just drag that value way down until we kind of get like a skinny tube. Something like this. And then let's also tab into edit mode. And at this point, we're just going to hover over the middle and go Control R. And you should see the yellow line here for the loop tool. And if you roll your middle mouse button, you're going to see you can add in all these segments. Let's add in quite a few. So about this many. Okay. Awesome. Now in our front um, orthographic view, let's tab back out. Let's give this a, um, go to add modifier, search and just type in mirror. Give it a mirror. And because its origin point is in the center, we could actually tab into edit mode. Press A to select everything, go G and move it over. And I'm going to go ahead G and Z and just move it up. And I might have to tab out and just select the body and the eyes. And just go G and Z and move them up a little bit. Just to kind of match the um, reference I'm looking at. So something like this. I'm going to select the legs. I'm going to tab back into edit mode. And I might just select some of the top verts. So they're not necessary. So something like that. Looking really cool. Now these little guys, they also have some little toes that are barely visible, but I guess to be accurate, um, you will add them in. So we'll go to shift A and just click and select these bottom loop averts and then go to your right orthographic view, like so. And then go shift D to duplicate and move it over, R to rotate and then S to scale it way down. Bring it in and then just go E to extrude move it over here and an S to scale slightly and an E to extrude again and then roll in some loops by going control R something like that and you can give this as much of an organic shape as you want I'm gonna go something like that and then I'll select a vertex on it and go control L to select it all and in the bottom orthographic view I'm just gonna go shift D to duplicate move one over I'll rotate it slightly move it in shift D to duplicate and I'll have another one rotate it slightly and here with proportional editing um, you could if you wanted to just come in here and maybe make it connected only and just kind of slightly adjust some of these just to give them a little bit more organic kind of a feel very simple we're going to tab back out we're going to right click and go shade smooth and that's pretty straightforward um, I can't really see any hands in the reference images, um, just the arms. But what I am going to do is I'll actually just to save time. I'm going to select these, tap back in and just select any mesh on the leg and go control L. Shift D to duplicate and move it over. And I'm just going to go R and roughly rotate it 90 degrees and just go G and move it and bring it in like so. And looking at the references, the arms sit a little bit higher than you might think. But I'm also going to just select this end face and I'm just going to go E to extrude out. Control R, just roll in some more loops like that, just to make it a little bit longer. And that's it, okay? You don't have to do this 100%, but just roughly something like this. Now I'm going to right click, make sure to go Shade Smooth. I'm also going to go Materials, I'm going to go New, and I'm just going to call this Legs and Arms. And under the viewport display, I'll make that a darker kind of color. There we go. Okay. So now what we're going to do in the next part is we'll actually start adding our hair particles to the body and making that look really cool. And then the final and third part will be where we actually rig this guy up and make him um, animatable, which will be really fun. 
As always, make sure to check the description below. You can join my Patreon. That's also a way for you to support the channel and you get access to hundreds of different projects and files, including this one over here. So check that out in the description below.